When you're using glucose-lowering medications to manage type 2 diabetes, a person-centered, holistic approach is the standard of care for good reason. It can prevent complications and optimize quality of life. But to achieve these goals, you need to address four specific areas. Glycemic management, weight management, cardiovascular risk factor management, and the use of cardio-renal protective agents when indicated. The treatment algorithm pictured here can help guide your care. First, note the blue callout at the top of the chart. It's a good reminder of a consistent tenet of type 2 diabetes treatment. To avoid therapeutic inertia, reassess and modify treatment regularly. This tenet will help you reduce the risk of the long-term complications associated with elevated glucose. Likewise, the top of the chart serves as a reminder of the foundational approaches for treating people with type 2 diabetes, including understanding and addressing social determinants of health. To guide your treatment, the algorithm is divided into two actional priorities. The first is cardio-renal risk reduction and comprehensive cardiovascular management in high-risk individuals with type 2 diabetes. The second part of the algorithm focuses on glycemic management through both glucose-lowering and weight management approaches. We'll start with the cardio-renal side of the algorithm. Robust data on cardiovascular outcomes indicates the use of cardio-renal protective glucose-lowering agents for specific high-risk individuals. This includes those with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, heart failure, and chronic kidney disease. For people with established ASCVD or those at high risk of ASCVD who are over 55 years of age and have two or more additional risk factors, recommended treatment includes a GLP-1 receptor agonist with proven cardiovascular benefit or an SGLT2 inhibitor with proven cardiovascular benefit. If A1C is still above goal, for individuals on a GLP-1 receptor agonist, consider adding an SGLT2 inhibitor or vice versa. Pioglitazone may also be considered. The decision to use these agents is independent of background use of metformin. For individuals with heart failure, recommended treatment includes an SGLT2 inhibitor with proven heart failure benefit. For individuals with CKD, you need to consider an individual's estimated glomerular filtration rate and other lab results. For individuals with albuminuria or an EGFR under 60, recommended treatment includes an SGLT2 inhibitor or GLP-1 receptor antagonist with primary evidence of slowing progression of CKD and reduction in cardiovascular events. For individuals with an EGFR over 20, recommended treatment includes an SGLT2 inhibitor until initiation of dialysis or transplantation. If an SGLT2 inhibitor is contraindicated or not tolerated, a GLP-1 receptor agonist is recommended, given the elevated risk of cardiovascular disease in this population. Now we'll move to the side of the algorithm focused on reducing long-term risk complications through the achievement and management of glycemic and weight goals. For glycemic management, you want to choose approaches that provide the efficacy to achieve individualized glucose goals. A number of approaches are reasonable, such as metformin or agents, including combination therapy, that provide adequate efficacy for achieving and maintaining treatment goals. As guidance, the algorithm provides a hierarchy of efficacy for glucose-lowering medications. When choosing a glucose-lowering plan, consider agents with high to very high dual glucose and weight efficacy. Anytime you're using glucose-lowering medications in people with type 2 diabetes, it's important to choose therapies that match person-centered care goals and then refine the care plan as needed through an iterative process. If you encounter barriers to achieving person-centered goals, consider non-pharmacological approaches such as referring to a diabetes self-management and education support program. Using technologies such as diagnostic continuous glucose monitors to identify gaps and needs, and addressing social determinants of health that may be impacting achievement of goals. To learn more about the use of glucose-lowering medications in the management of type 2 diabetes, visit professional.diabetes.org.